Queen Camilla bursts into tears as King Charles references mortality amid cancer treatment. King Charles and Queen Camilla wrapped up their ten-day royal tour of Australia and Samoa with an emotional farewell. The King and Queen ended the tour at a traditional Ava ceremony, which was held in the village of Siamu, the Daily Mail reported. King Charles was bestowed with the honorary title of Toiga o Tumua, and he appeared to be genuinely moved by the warm welcome he'd received during the tour. I shall always remain devoted to this part of the world and hope that I survive long enough to come back again and see you, King Charles told the crowd. We shall take away with us, I promise you, very special memories of our time here. We thank you for our wonderful gifts. While some outlets suggested Queen Camilla was photographed crying with laughter during the event, others noted how emotional the King and Queen both were. Hello viewers, please remember to subscribe and click on the notifications bell icon, so you will be notified whenever we upload new cookies about the British royal family. Meanwhile, the village's chief told Charles, via the Daily Mail, your papa Prince Philip was here, so were your brothers. So thank you for making the time. Your royal visit has lifted our house. King Charles shared his cancer diagnosis with the world in February. Since then, reports have suggested the king's cancer treatment is going well. As he is undertaking an international royal tour while undergoing cancer treatment, King Charles traveled to Australia and Samoa with two doctors. During the farewell ceremony, King Charles told attendees, via GB News, We've been so impressed by the beautiful way in which all the villages have decorated the roadsides, it is something very special about Samoa. The Daily Mail reported that King Charles and Queen Camilla's royal tour has been extremely successful. Charles' Australia and Samoa tour was seen by Buckingham Palace as a huge test of his reign and surpassed all expectations, they reported. The outlet also noted that the Queen has been an important support for the King following his cancer diagnosis. At Queen Camilla's urging, he has been taking some downtime by reading a great new book, the Daily Mail reported. The King feels closer to his wife than ever. The couple are a remarkable unit, courtiers say, and she has kept it real for him. Queen Camilla crashes filming of Married at First Sight Australia during Royal Tour. Queen Camilla unintentionally gate-crashed, the set of Married at First Sight Australia during her Australian tour with King Charles, causing a ruckus among the contestants. The filming of the reality show's 12th season in Sydney coincided with the royal visit, which ended with an official dinner in Samoa. The competing couples momentarily put aside their marital issues as they watched the unexpected incident unfold on their television screens. Shirtless grooms and their astonished brides observed from their balconies as they realized the king and queen were outside. Wearing a royal blue midi dress, the queen greeted the thrilled crowd at the start of the nine-day royal tour of Australia and summer. The encounter occurred near One Global Resorts, the luxury complex accommodating the maths cast this season. Contestants seen reacting to the surprise included Jacqueline Burfoot and Ryan Donnelly, who were noticed recording the moment on their mobiles. Earlier that day, grooms Paul Antoine and Ryan were spotted among the crowd at Green Square, eagerly anticipating Camilla's arrival, according to OK. However, it is reported that the King and Queen's appearance disrupted filming, as the participants were summoned back inside by producers to get ready for an upcoming dinner party. Channel 9 cameras captured the moment of Camilla's arrival near the set, a producer informed Daily Mail Australia, but it is still uncertain whether the scenes will be included in the final cut given all the drama. The new series based on the UK original, has rapidly become one of the most dramatic yet, with a first for the series as bride and groom Jeff Gobbles and Rydis Siljenkovic, had previously been in a relationship. On Tuesday, King Charles and Queen Camilla concluded their royal tour on a high note, with thousands of individuals lining the streets of Sydney, against the backdrop of the iconic Opera House in the late afternoon. Despite disclosing his cancer treatment in February, the King appeared to be in high spirits. 
While many doubted the feasibility of the tour, the king managed to make the trip down under, albeit with adjustments recommended by medical professionals. The visit's duration was shortened and engagements were scheduled to avoid early mornings and late nights, but it still proved to be a busy itinerary for the monarch. Tuesday's activities alone included a visit to a food bank, a social housing project, a literacy initiative, a community barbecue, and the celebration of the Sydney Opera House's 50th anniversary. Queen Camilla outlines mission to eliminate abuse during moving speech in Samoa. Queen Camilla has outlined her mission to eliminate abuse during a moving speech in Samoa. At an event organized by the Commonwealth, the Queen, 77, delivered a keynote address in recognition of its efforts to end gender-based violence. She opened the speech by saying, Prime Minister, ladies, and gentlemen, it is a huge pleasure to be here with you today. I would, first, like to thank the people of Samoa for the warm welcome that my husband and I have received and for your hospitality and generosity to us and to the whole Commonwealth family. Impressing the room with her skills in speaking the Samoan language, Camilla added, I was delighted recently to come across the wonderful Samoan prover, E. Ola Inaloa Tamatai. With apologies to the men in the room, I thought that we might make this our motto today. The phrase E. Ola Inaloa Tamatai means women can achieve anything in English. The Queen continued, according to a legend, a competition was once held between men and women in a village to thatch the roof of the house of Chief Tortunu. Although they started at the same time, the women finished their side first, as they had labored through the night, while the men slept. We know that abuse can be prevented and ultimately eliminated, but only if we work together until that task is completed. That is our commitment, to each other, to the Commonwealth and to the generations to come. The mother of two made a sweet joke about her husband, King Charles, saying, as one whose husband is often toiling into the small hours, long after my head is on the pillow, I should stress there are plenty of exceptions. But the moral of the proverb is, women will turn their hands successfully to any task that must be done, and will work hard until it is completed. As we gather to discuss our theme, advocating for women and girls in the Commonwealth, we have a gigantic task ahead of us, for which we all male and female will need the same spirit that inspired those women Thatchers. It is this, to end domestic and sexual violence across the Commonwealth, now and forever. And its enormity can be seen from the shocking statistics. Globally, 30% of women have been subjected to either physical or sexual violence in their lifetime. Most of this at the hands of an intimate partner. Worldwide, 27% of women aged 15 to 49 who have been in a relationship, report that they have experienced some sort of abuse from their partners. Thanks for watching, please don't forget to like this video and drop comments, and most importantly don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything.